Hi everyone, welcome back to another NDEB updates. Dr. Ahmed Hafez from Scholars Dental. There's two main points I want to discuss in this video. One is that the AFK August 2022 exam, the registration date has been set, and the AFK August 2021 exam passing rates are on the website on the NDEB website right now. So we're going to take a look at these two things, and I'm going to try to keep this video quick. So let's get started. All right. So the first thing I want to discuss is if you go to dates and locations here, you could see that, yes, we know the Feb is coming February 2nd, 2022. Um, and then we have the, uh, the exam in August uh, 13, 14 of 2022. What matters here is the registration open date now is set in March sick on March 16th. Uh, 2022 9 a.m okay uh eastern time so that is kind of like earlier than what i expected it to be uh usually we could uh, what i've seen is that the opening days probably in uh, or the registration days probably in april sometime now it's been i see it in march okay i mean this is not a bad thing uh so that way usually our courses our AFK course starts in the beginning of March. So people will know or find out if they got a seat or not, which gives them the option more if they, if they, uh, you know, uh, do want to transfer to the next course or not. Right. Um, I'm not hoping, or, or, or let's say I'm more hopeful of, of this one, you know, the March 16 one in 2022, that the registration is going to be smoother than the past. I'm, I'm hopeful of that because we could see that for the Feb exam, they open more seats. And so for the August 2022, the NDEB might be more prepared, already accommodating for or, or, you know, making more seats available for applicants. So I'm and um, the only issue if the score, if the marks of the Feb exam don't come out before that date. Right. So let's say you did the exam in Feb. If your results don't c come out or they are later than March 16, then you will be at a disadvantage when it comes to booking your seat. Now, I believe this is kind of fair because this way, you know, um, the people that didn't do the Feb exam have more of a chance to get their seat. Okay. So not too bad. So March 16, right? So that's one point that, that you want to kind of pay attention to. So if you're doing the Feb exam, there's if depending on when the results so it depends on the results if the results are you know longer than six weeks and then there's less of a chance of you booking in march if they come out before march 16 obviously then you're be, you'll be able to participate in on that registration open date in march 16 for the august 2022 exam so let's put that in here okay so that's one point to take to, to kind of take from this um, another thing is, I mean, one maybe advantage of this is that usually courses or our course for the AFK starts in March. We might start one week earlier, but anyway, it's, it's around that time. So you'll be still in the beginning of the course if you wanted to, if you do, so you'd find out sooner maybe that you're getting a seat or not, which will make it easier for you if you want to transfer to the next course or not, which is something we offer. Um, that's something we could discuss. So. If you need a, uh, to book a consult, we could discuss your options there as well. But I'm just saying instead of usually I've noticed that the registration open date in the past was like, let's say in April. So, uh, you know, that would be like a month after you have studied and, and just an idea. Most people that take courses, even if they don't get into the exam, at least with us, they stay in the course and don't transfer. They see how much work there is to do. So they always see the benefit of finishing the course and possibly even repeating or at least just making sure they cover uh, the course that they're in right now. Right. So that's what we noticed from the from our experience. So these are two points. Right. Um, maybe you want to keep in mind. Uh, so the, and I, mainly the whole point of this part of the video, is just to make you aware that that's the registration date now, March 16. It's been set um, and, you know, you want to get ready for another, uh, you, you know, waking up early, sitting in front of the computer, who knows crashes or technical issues again. 
hopefully not cease being booked another thing that uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm being positive about is that the August exam there's two days for it the 13th and the 14th so I'm thinking okay maybe they're also accommodating for more seats that way okay so that is in regards to the date here all right and something just neat to see here on the website is if you go to this tab here you'll see that you could check now all dates and locations together um, I thought this would be interesting uh so or just you know convenient you could see all the pathways now if you want to look at your afk stuff or acj stuff or the you know the direct pathway you go to equivalency process okay certification means oscian boards and written board exam or the written exam specialty certification is you know the dseke so equivalency is this one you could kind of search which location or which uh dates there are for these so you can see all of that here as well so I just thought that would be a convenient thing to show you in case um, you're not aware. And you can see which ones are open, right? So here, for example, if you just go for all pathways, you can see, okay, well, this is open. This is open. This is open, right? You could even show only the open ones. And you can see these are the ones that are open for registration as of now. So it's mainly OSCE and the SDKE right now. So just thought I would show you that tool. Now, the other thing is if you go to resources and historical passing rates finally this is start this works again um, for a while it was kind of not working and we could see now the results of the afk exam and, and, and the direct process here so you could see that in 2020 uh, one point i want to mention back here for the for the march actually is one thing that could affect the seats is that um you know if there's any if the new variant or anything like that affects travel again or affects uh social distancing or affects how many people you could fit in a building we already starting to see some issues there so you know hopefully that doesn't uh, affect the exam in august um so that's a third point you want to keep in mind it's unpredictable right okay let's go back to the passing rates so the passing rates you can see in 2020 only 744 people took the exam i think maybe that has something to do with the traveling travel restrictions maybe 44 percent passing rate for the afk and in 2021 august this is the august exam number of participants 473 look at that cut in almost in half from 2020 and a quarter of what it was in 20 well wait sorry so let's let's uh in 2019 it was two exams so you're able to do two exams um so technically it's cut in half right because 20 2019 means two exams so that means 800 maybe per exam and here you have 470 per the for the august exam and that was the only exam in 2021 so it's cut in half right um and you can see the passing rate is 32 percent now we launched a, a survey a few months ago. The survey was, okay, did you take the August exam? Did you pass or fail? Did you take a course, any course, you know, how long you studied? And we got some cool results, uh, interesting results. Um, we have so far 60 responses, over 60 responses. Um, and I think that's, you know, maybe good enough to share. So we'll discuss those results in another video um, to see. But, you know, our numbers didn't come up to 32 because maybe there's a bias of, uh, you know, people that want to, that pass would respond to the survey more possibly. So just keep that in mind. We'll talk about that in the survey video, but over here, just notice, yeah, it did reduce from, um, from previous. So you can see the AFK, um, it's always been, you know, around 40, 40%, 49, 50, it's been reducing. And then this one was 32. So it's 10% it's less, not terrible, right? It's not so much less. And you know, so maybe some people are noticing that they don't meet a lot of people that pass because also the numbers are affected, right? So, you know, 30% of this is like 120, maybe, right? 145 people that pass. So, you know, in total of all Canada and the world that could probably take the AFK, it's not a lot of people. So um, that's there. Now you can see here in the ACJ, which is interesting, 200 took it, but... 62 people uh sorry 62 percent passed which is increasing so if you look at this the number of acj applicants it was never as many as the afk but 
you can see it reduced to, uh, to so for example in 2019 it was 978 um, so half of that would be you know 450 between 450 and 500 so it's almost cut in half or even more than that um, but the passing rate has increased look at that it's been increasing since 2019 um, and then now it's 62%. So is ACJ getting easier? Are we more knowledgeable about how to navigate the ACJ exam? Yes, people say the August exam, there are some new updates and stuff like that, which of course we're keeping that all updated to make sure um, you know our students are knowledgeable. But um, what matters here is the way I'm thinking is that if the ACJ people are passing more and the AFK are less, which means, you know, the ACJ area is not as crowded now, right? So, so if you're if the AFK from AFK to ACJ, the flow here is reduced, right? Less flow from here, but the ACJ there's more people passing, right? This means this area is not that crowded, which means people that maybe finish their AFK, even if it's let's say in August 2022 they probably have an increased chance of getting into the ACJ exam immediately following, which would be, in this case, after August, it would be in November 2022, right? So that's something to keep in mind. Um, there was always this kind of hesitation in this, in this uh, you know, phase here that when I finished the August exam, for example, should I start preparing for the ACJ right after, which is the November 2022 ACJ? And, you know, some people think, okay, well, if I take a course and I start and I don't get in, then uh, I have to repeat the course again, maybe, or, or go back and train again. Um, if I don't take the course and I do get into the November exam, then, well, now I need to, I lost time studying. We offer a solution for that. We tell people you could just take both, right? So just if you if you register for this course here um, and you don't get into the November 2022 exam, no problem. We'll let you, we'll give you access again in the next course at no charge, um, especially for our students, for our AFK students. So that's something we do to, to remove that risk, right? That, that dilemma you have to face. Um, but again, you could just, uh, what my, the point is that you could think that here, um, there is an increased chance of people or students getting into the ACJ immediately after the AFK they do, right? There is that. So, th of course, depends on what happens with, you know, the, the pandemic and all that and if there's any restrictions, okay? Um, another thing is, you know, you can see the ACS is, is increased as well. Um, that's interesting, right? 73 people only did it, 66% pass, so more than half. Um, even though it was low in the past, right? Now, you can see here, it's not like the AFK, it's like, it, it is the lowest ever AFK, but it's not that much lower than the lowest before, which was 36 in 2012, right? You know, so just to kind of keep in mind that it's, it's not like unheard of that we, that's a 32% passing rate. So yeah, um, and you could you could kind of classify the like you could uh, re reorder these based on number of participants, passing rates. You know, uh, if you click on any of these or year. So I thought this was something interesting to look at, um, and and that's pretty much it. If you look at the certification process, you'll see that the written exam and the OSCE are actually um, passing rates are a lot higher, right? Ninety eight. This was in 2012. Let's see. And recently they have been reducing. So you can see in 2021, 83% for written and 76 for OSCE, even though previously they've been always in the 90s. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much it. I don't want to make this any longer. I hope I included everything I kind of wanted to say. Uh, I think I did. If I forgot anything to mention, please leave in the comment section below. Um, I'll make another video for the survey results that we'll discuss. And also... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want, if you're interested in discussing your specific situation, book a free consult with us, contact us. We'll leave all, all, in the, all that in the description uh, below. Um, that's it, everyone. Uh, I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you.